Hello, this is Dora Tarver from createandmanageschedules.com and in today's lesson we're going to review how to define the project information including if, how to set up the project calendars. Now a uh, project doesn't typically start the day that you create your project file. So after you've created your project file and you define your project start date in the file, you also need to then set that project start date in the project file. And as a result, project will automatically start dates on that uh, task on that date. So from project, if you go into the project tab and select project information, the project information dialog box opens and you'll see here that there's a start date field and you're able to define the start date for your project. When you click on the drop down arrow a calendar will pick up. You can scroll forward or back and select the date that your project will start. So here you can also define um, if you're using a standard calendar or if you've created a custom calendar. Project comes loaded with a standard calendar, night shift calendar, and a 24-hour calendar. This is an example of a calendar that we'll walk through that I created separately. You can also um, decide if your project is going to work backwards from a finish date and then your, your schedule will calculate based on knowing that you need to finish by a certain date. Now on that note uh, it's not recommended that you set up your schedule that way. It's always the best practice to plan from where you are, get the estimates, and see how long it'll actually take to do what, you what you're planning to accomplish in your project. Uh, if you discover that your uh, plan is moving past the finish date that your stakeholders wanted you to uh, deliver by, uh, there are a few techniques that you can use to help reduce the uh, project timeline, such as adding additional resources or removing uh, activity or functions from what you're planning to deliver in order to make the timeline that you have. So typically in a new project schedule, if you've set the start date, then tasks that do not have a predecessor um, will automatically get that start date when you add those tasks into your project. Now when you have the settings the way you want, then click OK. Then click from the tabs, File, and then Save to save these settings. Now to make sure that you always um, set these settings for the project start date when you create a project file, you can set project up so that automatically when you create a new file it will prompt you for that information. So when you go to the File tab, select Options, and from this dialog box, if you go to the Advanced Feature uh, category, you'll see in the General section that there's an option for Prompt for Project Info for New Projects. Then click OK to close the Project Options dialog box. So if you go to File and select New and open up a new project file, you'll notice that the Project Information dialog box will automatically open and here you can change your settings. Now let's look at the calendar. The days and times that your resources work affect the duration of your project schedule. If you have teams in different parts of the world, maybe a standard work week is different. Or if you're working with, uh, let's say, vendors who have a different holiday or calendar schedule, um, then their work hours would be different. So in project, we define calendars to specify the days and times that people work. And if you notice in the toolbar section under the project tab, there is a change working time um, button. If you select that, the change working time dialog box opens up, and by default it'll open up in the standard calendar. Again, if you have multiple calendars, you'll see all of them here, as well as the calendars for all of the resources. So in the four calendar area here, you'll see by default the current calendar that's assigned to the project. 
A calendar defines a set of working and non-working days and times. So in this image here you'll notice the working days and the non-working days and if you had any exceptions etc you would see that here as well. You also see the working times. So in this example 8 a.m. till noon and there's an hour lunch break and then from 1 to 5 are the working times. So we're able to assign a calendar to a project file to specify the working times for the entire project. So typically you can grab the copy of the human resources calendar for the corporation and put in all the vacation all of the holiday times that are um, common among the organization and add that into the project calendar. Um, likewise with the specific resources in your schedule if they have a separate um, time when you know they're going to be on vacation or somehow have a work exception due to a holiday of some type, you can set a calendar for them by selecting their name and then selecting the day and the time and configuring that in the same way that we're going to do in this example that we're going to walk through right now. Now the easiest way to edit a calendar uh, or to create a special calendar for your organization is simply to edit the existing calendar. So you'd come in here, you'd select your days, you'd define what the exception is, and you'd put in the start and finish uh, times. On the other hand, you can also create a whole new calendar by simply clicking on the Create New Calendar button up here in the right corner. When you click on Create New, then you can define a uh, calendar name. So we'll just call this um, Example Calendar. And <clears throat> you can create a whole new calendar or uh, you can make a copy of the standard calendar. It's easier to use a standard calendar because it already has filled in uh, the exception days like Saturday and Sunday uh, and other details that will make it just easier for you to start from. So start with the standard calendar, click on OK, and now you're in the, that example calendar um, that mirrors the standard calendar. The, this change working time dialog box has two tabs down here, exceptions and work weeks, which are used to define the working and non-working times for the calendar. The work weeks tab defines the work schedule that you follow week after week. The work week defines the working and non-working days of the week and work hours that you're specifying. Of course you could have multiple work weeks which if you work different schedules at different times of the year uh, you can define that in your project schedule. So for example in the summertime you might have a shorter work week or for a specific resource let's say maybe they're working a different schedule that you need to define. The default work week sets weekdays as working days and weekends as non-working days. So if we click on this first row here and click on the details button, the details show us that Sunday has no time and Saturday has no time. However, if you hover and click on Monday or Tuesday, you'll notice over here that there is time by default already filled in. So to set up a new work week, we already were in the first row and here are the days which we have currently defined as working days. And if we wanted to change the time, we would set, select set days to these specific working times. So let's say Monday for your organization starts at 10 a.m. And uh, let's say you have a two-hour lunch break uh, from 2 p.m. to actually from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and maybe your work day ends at 7 p.m. Okay. Now if you wanted to define a special work week, let's say uh, long hours and maybe the long hours start in the fall 
let's just say we'll go back to a fall date and we'll just say September 3rd and that ends on mm, October 26th. And the next step is to set up the, the specific days and times during these long hours. So to do that, select the details button and here you have the option to set the days to a specific working time. So if I move this up a little bit, we're saying we have long hours during that time frame and let's say maybe our long hours will be from 9 a.m. So just click in the cell, type 9 a.m. Let's give ourselves an hour lunch break starting at 1 o'clock, ending at 2, and the day is over at 7.30 p.m. Okay, I select Tuesday and then hold my shift key down and click on Friday and then set the times. I can go ahead and type it in for a group as opposed to one item at a time, one day at a time. So let's set this for 9 a.m. for these four days. We have a lunch break starting at 1 p.m. and it'll be for an hour, so at 2 p.m and then we work till 7.30 p.m. So this is the default schedule for uh, the long hours calendar. Now I want to point out that you can also hold the control key down on your keyboard and select days uh, that are not consecutive. So similar in Windows if you click on something and hold a shift key down click on another thing it'll select everything or if you hold the control key down and click on specific items you can select those one at a time so if you want to set a day to a non-working day then you'd select that day and then select over here set date and non-working time and then that will make that a non-working time in your calendar from this dialog box you can have more than just two rows. We can have another row. Let's just say you have a 30 minute break and you start working again at 8 p.m. and continue working till 1 a.m. So, whoops. So you can control your calendar in this way. And when you're done, just click on the OK button. Now, on the Exceptions tab, you can define your exceptions. So, for example, uh, Christmas. Oops. And let's say that's uh, December 25th. Now, in this example, let's say they have uh, maybe December 23rd and 24th as a holiday as well. So, I'll go ahead and select the 23rd. and it finishes on the 26th so these days become exception non-working days however what if on the 23rd it's actually a half day maybe what we can do is go to details and set working time to be 8 to noon we can select a row hit the delete key and delete that content. Oh, it ends after one occurrence starting on the 23rd. Click OK. And then what we'll do is we'll set these as additional. Maybe we'll call this uh, half day. Before Christmas and then just say Christmas holiday and we'll set the time for the 24th through the 26th okay 
So now if we look at our calendar, we'll see that these are non-working uh, and this is an exception day where it's a short work day. When we click on the 24th to 25th, it's an all day event. So there's no time that shows up here. Now when you finish working on calendars, go ahead and click on OK to save the change working time calendar. And then click save to make sure it's in your project schedule. You can copy calendars using the organizer. So if you go to file tab and select um, the organizer button here and then go to the calendars tab you'll see we have our example calendar that we just created and we can actually copy that into the global template that comes with the project so that every time you create a new project file you will have the option to select this existing calendar if you want to and then we click on close because now it's added into the global MPT file Now if we go back to the Options dialog box and select Schedule, you'll see that the calendar options for this project are, are being applied to our example schedule. But you can also set this for all new project files by simply selecting that option from this drop-down list box. Project's default calendar options are set up for a typical work week. You'll see a start time of 8 a.m., end time of 5 p.m., 8 hours a day, 40 hours a week, 20 per days per month. But you can configure this and select different times. Uh, you can adjust the hours per day and the hours per week as well as month. This is all in your control via the project options. So if you're planning to create fiscal year reports, then you'll want to make sure that the fiscal year starts in is set to your organization's uh, month when their fiscal year starts. Um, you can also set when your work week starts, as if it starts on a Sunday or on a Monday or well, Friday, you could set that. So calendars tell the project what it needs to know for the entire project, specific work weeks, or for specific tasks. Once this is configured, click on OK and save it so that it's applied to your project schedule. Now, if you have any questions about what we've discussed, feel free to contact us and have an excellent day.